Good morning from snowy Washington, D.C. I am sending all my love and warmest, warmest wishes to my friends and family in Texas. If you've lost power, I hope that you are going to get it back as soon as possible. And I hope you are staying warm and safe. So today's question comes from, sorry. Today's question comes from my dear friend Chantal, who um, we were talking about this in email exchange. And I thought, you know, this is gonna be so helpful for so many people. It's such a juicy question. So um, there's a more specific version of the question and a more general version. So I'll start with the general version. How do I know? So you're, you're trying to make a decision. Is this right for me? Now this is something, probably something to do with your creativity in your career. Is this decision right for me or am I just scared? Hey, um, so, and then, and then Chantal brought up the upper limit problem, which is a concept that um, was introduced by Gay Hendricks, who is um, a popular um, self-help author and in his book, The Big Leap. Um, so I want to, iPad not cooperating. I want to read you an excerpt from the big leap to explain what an upper limit problem is. So we will distinguish how to, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about how to know whether it's an upper limit problem um, or if the thing that you're trying to figure out is actually just not right for you. Um, and it's not because you're scared. So um, here's what Gay Hendricks says about, the, his, here's how he defines the upper limit problem. Each of us has an inner thermostat setting that determines how much love, success, and creativity we allow ourselves to enjoy. When we exceed our inner thermostat setting, we will often do something to sabotage ourselves, causing us to drop back into the old familiar zone where we feel secure. Unfortunately, our thermostat setting usually gets programmed in early childhood before we can think for ourselves. Once programmed, our upper limit thermostat setting holds us back from enjoying all the love, financial abundance, and creativity that's rightfully ours. And this is, this is another um, <clears throat> important uh, concept that he introduces, which is um, the zones of competence through the zone, and the zone of excellence and the zone of genius. It keeps us in our zone of competence or at best our zone of excellence. It prevents us from living in the ultimate destination of the journey, our zone of genius. And he goes on to define those zones um, later on in this in the chapter. But you know, honestly, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, when you are operating in your zone of competence, it's something that you are good at, you're capable, you're getting it done. Um, maybe sometimes it's necessary work and you're not able to delegate it to someone else, but it's not, I mean, it's like, it's like taxes, unless you're an accountant, like you're getting it done, but it's not, it's, it's, it's not the work that you were put here to do, right? Um, and so actually the tricky bit is between zone of excellence and zone of genius, right? Because lots of people are going to ask you to do work that is only in your zone of excellence and each person has to figure out for themselves where the line between zone of excellence and zone, zone of genius is for them. Anyway, that is beyond the scope of this video. Yes, it is It is a good book. And I have another, another book I wanna share with you, um, which if you have, if you've read A Bright Clean Mind, then you've, you're, you're um, I've already shared this quote with you, but I'm going to share it again because it's just so important. So we also talked about intuition. So how do you know if your intuition is telling you that something is not, it's just not for you? Um, you know, maybe it's a cool project. Someone has come to you and said, would you like to work on this? And, you know, how you know that it's not right for you is you know your intuition is completely neutral 
And it's like, nah, nah. I mean, that's a great project for someone else, but it's not right for me. Um, and I, I've definitely had that experience where, you know, on the outside, it looks like something that you should definitely say yes to. But if you don't feel like the inward calling to work on it, if it's a very like flat in a good way, neutral, nah, um, then you know that it's not an upper limit problem because your intuition isn't, your intuition is always neutral. Like it's, it's, um, it's not, it's not the voice of fear. It's not, it's not elated. It's always, always neutral. And so that's, how, that's to, the, in my experience, that's how you know if it's an upper limit problem or not, because there is an emotional charge attached to the question of, do I do this or not? And if it is an upper limit problem, you're gonna feel some combination of longing and panic <laughs> because the longing is like your deep soul urge that like you know that doing this is, is doing your like deep soul like next level work. And because it's your next level, you know, the, the like warm, like little animal body inside you is like, no, I just want to stay comfortable. I don't, um, I don't want to put myself out there. And so that's why I look for that, um, that really strange mix of emotions, um, when I'm trying to figure that out, if it is a, an upper limit problem or not. So an example of this in my life is I am working on a science fiction novel right now. Um, you may have heard me talk about it in other videos that is, you know, basically it's the kind of book that, you know, scares someone who had a really crappy science teacher for two years in middle school who basically completely derailed me. Um, I mean, okay, that's not fair that's on me, but I would have had to work really, really, really hard to overcome everything that I had uh, missed out on in two, two years of learning nothing because this, this man had tenure and was a complete deadbeat. Um, so they, he couldn't get fired. Um, so I, so I came to high school and I was like really behind. I felt like I was really behind. Like, even though I was in honor science classes, I never felt like I fully, um, understood what was going on. I was always getting like B pluses by the skin of my teeth and, or B minuses. And same deal with math. I had another teacher who made me feel like I was never gonna get it, you know, was completely discouraging. And, and so when it comes to STEM, I feel super, super insecure. And so when it comes to writing a book like The Boy From Tomorrow, that's a bunch of history research. I got this. It's a t it's you know time slip. <laughs> this is not inventing a time machine and figuring out some sort of um, plausible <laughs> vehicle by which you know my characters are going to be um, having adventures in other times. And so this is the thing that is scary to me, and it's because it's scary that I know I have to do it because this is going to be the best book I ever write if I can pull this off. And. So with that, I want to share a quote from Inner Work. Robert A. Johnson is a, an absolutely wonderful Jungian psychoanalyst and author. Um, he passed away a couple years ago, but his work is so accessible. He's written a ton of books and a lot of them are like really short. They're like a hundred pages. It's like a great introduction. And so if you are interested in the world of Jung, but you feel intimidated, start with Robert A. Johnson. So in this chat, we have been skirting around the concept of the shadow and what Robert A. Johnson calls the gold in your shadow. Um, and if you're not familiar with the concept, the Jungian concept of the shadow, I'm just gonna read the whole uh, passage that it will explain both what the shadow is and what the gold in the shadow is. Yes, inner work, inner work. And this is on page 49. Whoops, no, that's not page 49. It's, no, it is page 49. 
In every person, there is a part of the unconscious that is very close to the ego and usually appears as the same gender as the dreamer. The shadow is a kind of alter ego, split off from the conscious ego mind and sentenced to live in the unconscious. Usually the shadow contains qualities and traits, both negative and positive, that are a natural part of the ego personality. But the ego, for one reason or another, has either failed to assimilate these qualities or has repressed them outright. Sometimes the qualities in the shadow seem embarrassing or primitive to the ego. One doesn't want to admit that they belong to one. Sometimes the shadow has tremendous positive strengths that the ego won't claim because it would mean either too much responsibility or a shattering alteration of one's puny self-image. So the gold and the shadow are, it's, it's all, all of the superpowers that you are afraid to embrace. All of your most magical capabilities that you um, have, been, have been putting off cultivating and using because, you know, your magnificence is terrifying you. And that is true for everyone who is watching this video, every single person, everyone. There is something in your mind and in your heart that you feel occasionally and like consistently, you're feeling the call of this thing. You know, this is a creative project, some great endeavor that you dream about and are afraid that you are never going to have the courage to take on. So that's my, that's my suggestion for you, my loving suggestion, is to sit with that, um, open your notebook, open your journal, and write down the things that scare you creatively and go from there. And, you know, this is how you get super, super clear on what is not for you and what, in a sense, in a way that you, you feel like you wish weren't for you because you're scared of it, but that's your path, right? So I hope that this answer was helpful. I would be delighted to chat more about intuition and the role of intuition in the creative process um, in my life and in general. So if you want, want me to chat about that sometime soon, let me know in the comments below or ask any other question that you might have about creative well-being, ego management, veganism 101, anything you want to chat about, I will or want, want me to expound upon. In one of these Friday morning sessions, let me know. I will be delighted to answer your question. So leave that below or DM me. Um, I am available for coaching. I also have a bunch of, uh, not a bunch, <laughs> I have two. I will have a bunch of online courses, uh, which you can check out at cometparty.teachable.com. Thank you so much for watching and stay warm, stay safe, stay dry, and uh, I'll see you next week.